Hi, I'm psychologist Tom Glazer. I've long been fascinated by what the happiest, healthiest people have to teach the rest of us. This is the second installment in a series that seeks to uncover simple everyday things we can all do to create more satisfying, fulfilling lives. In this webisode, we focus on meditation and mindfulness. People are born with a sense of awareness. People are born with a heightened sense of awareness that they're able to put themselves in that moment and see that moment and be in that moment and live in that moment. And that's where I think I separate myself from the people that I see every day is that they're not present in their moment. There is, their mind is somewhere else. They are not, they are not focused on what is going on at that moment. <laughs> it takes up last my face. And you're my definition of real happiness is to be in a state of consciousness, to be very aware of the moment and taking it for what it is and, and not allowing emotions, whether I'm feeling elated and, and laughing and, um, and smiling or, or I'm feeling some sense of sorrow for something and crying, but I allow myself to feel those emotions and just be present. Okay, I love flowers. And, um, Things sort of flow in my life. You know, there's a certain amount of ease and I don't have to sort of work too hard or push to make things happen. So like that, I think it has also a lot to do with my state of mind. There's some way in which I'm sort of internally pretty clear and um, not sort of a lot of turning of the mind and thinking things over a lot. It's just a sense of contentness. We need to really begin with our minds, in my view. We need to begin with um, allowing the mind to calm at least a little bit so that we can be aware of our experiences but also of our own thoughts and emotional reactions. Because if we're aware of them, then we can choose what we do with them. This is a little bit like what we're doing here today. That was staying... I am funny. And I know I'm funny. And, and I can bring that back to the seriousness of what we were just talking about before. How can you not be funny if you are not aware of what's going on around you? If you aren't aware of, of everything around you, how can you make light of it? How can you bring it into context and compare it to something else? And humor is comparing one situation to another situation, even if it's a stretch, and sometimes my jokes are a stretch. I'm fortunate that I have the knowledge that the present moment is a manifestation of everything that came before it. And so if I'm grateful for even one thing in this present moment, I have to be self-accepting of everything that happened prior to me being in that moment. I often ask myself, what feels good? So does it feel good to get uh, sort of irritated with the person at the other stop sign who I think should be letting me drive? Or does it feel better to like make eye contact and make some motion like, please, you go? Well, the second one. For me, the second one just yeah. feels better. And so I just keep making choices in that direction. The, the ability to cultivate awareness and mindfulness, I think, is really a, a central question in this topic on joy and, and happiness. Um, there are some lucky people that are probably born with are born with some greater ability to be present than others, but, but it really is a skill, and it is something that can be cultivated and developed intentionally, on purpose. And I think that um, it is very, very helpful to have some kind of a formal practice of mindfulness or of awareness, in the form of meditation, but it doesn't have to be just one type of meditation. I think that, that uh, what's called mindfulness meditation is a really, really good way to do it. But you could bring mindfulness aware, mindful awareness into um, walking. And walking meditation is a really, really good way to go about this for people who uh, have trouble sitting for a long period of time or get distracted. It's, it's nice to have something physical. But you could even do it through um, other forms of movement, like Tai Chi or yoga. If you're doing it consciously, that can become a meditative practice.
practice, uh, building your skill of awareness. Biking does make me really happy. Biking makes me very happy. I, I, biking now it, is part of the foundation that keeps me happy and keeps everything in my life in balance. I spend a lot of time on the bike. I ride hundreds of miles. I ride a couple hundred miles a week at least. And uh, I joke, people say, why do you bike so much? And I say, uh, so I don't come home and chop my family up into little pieces. <laughs> Not true, but, but it, is what, it is what really, it sets me, it just sets me right. I can get out there. It's, um, it, it's, it's meditative. It comes out of the breath and it creates a sense of presence and I meditate on that and when I'm breathing and when I am um, when I am able to do that it gives me gratuity and, and then I look at everything else in, in a light that that is connected and makes me feel present. So maybe one of the key words around happiness, I would say, is appreciation and gratitude. Mm -hmm. And really, not only just knowing that, but actually letting myself feel it. I think that's been one of the lovely things in my recent past around cultivating happiness, is I've been doing a lot of yoga. So I'm probably in yoga class. I spend three to six hours a week doing a yoga practice. And uh, part of what I hear one of my very excellent teachers say in class is actually feel this sense of contentment. Feel in your body. Don't just think that. Put your mind where you're in this moment, feeling the positive sensation, basically. And so I think that makes a difference, too. When I am fully in the here and now, happiness is available.